Okay, now uh, we pick up from previously, we have uh, discussed about the aluminium uh, potential versus pH uh, diagram. And uh, just be careful on the process and ask yourself whether you know how to plot. If you're given the environment, are you able to plot, identify where is the area, and then look at the, the where is the head, where is the tail, and what is the products that I expect over there. previously. Today we we'll look at um, what is uh, hydrogen e evolution. We keep seeing this word, all right? Hydrogen evolution basically just means that there is a hydrogen created in that uh, environment. Okay? Uh, I will give you one video uh, and this video is um, it mixed with other um, chemical compounds but the focus you focus on how you create hydrogen, right? Uh, so because this one is also involved the creation of hydrogen when you mix two compounds together and then <clears throat> you get hydrogen. Hello everyone, today will conduct an experiment with foil and pipe cleaning detergent. The solution of sodium hydroxide or alkali is usually used to clean pipes or blockages. Let's take the bottle and pour some alkali into it. Next, we need to make small balls from foil and add drip into our bottle. After a while, aluminum foil is dissolved in sodium hydroxide, forming hydrogen and sodium tetrahydroxyaluminate. Great tongue good twister, isn't it? The reaction with foil goes very roughly, and the balloon is soon inflated with hydrogen. Don't repeat this experiment, as it's dangerous. Now I remove the hot balloon filled with hydrogen and tied up. I use the flame of a gas burner to blow the balloon up. Water, the most useful substance for living organisms, is formed within the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen. Subscribe to my channel to learn a lot of, of the new. Okay, so just now I just show you the uh, uh, hydrogen evolution, right? Basically, when you mix uh, aluminum and you mix with acidic or alkalic uh, solution, you will get the chemical reaction uh, running through. And then one of the products from the chemical reaction is uh, hydrogen. Okay. Now, today we're going to focus on uh, reinforced steel, reinforced steel in concrete. So, um, if you are not sure what is reinforced uh, steel, I give you one animation here, right? And you will see what is uh, reinforced steel in a uh, civil aviation, a uh, civil application, a uh, civil construction uh, application. Let's see this animation. So if you put in reinforced steel inside a steel inside concrete, then some chemical reaction will happen throughout. Sometimes there's some exchange of positive negative charge on the surface. This one is, uh, is an animation on how um, corrosion happened in the reinforced steel. Huh? So for corrosion to happen, we know that you need oxygen, water, and hydrogen. So when there's a chemical reaction happen, then you will see the surface corroded. Right? And then when you cor keep cor uh, the corrosion happen, um, you will see some crack on the surface. Okay? You see some crack and then concrete and then the structure will fail. Uh, you try to imagine how strong is the chemical products, the byproducts of uh, from the surface. It can even break a concrete. Okay. 
So all those uh, uh, old building, or even if you watch the, even if you watch the uh, uh, war movie, uh, when uh, war movie you see all those uh, crack surfaces on the building, so you will see all the reinforced the, the steel inside the concrete, right? So basically, uh, why civil application or why building use reinforced uh, steel? Because uh, we need to, uh, concrete is very solid, but it's not good for tensile. Concrete is something like a uh, rock, but when you pull it, it's a very weak, uh, um, it's a very weak application uh, if you have a tensile. So you need to uh, complement the weakness by using uh, steel inside uh, together with the concrete. Okay, so that's why when you see uh, on the building construction site, they use a lot of concrete uh, together with the uh, steel. However, this combination will create one uh, main issue if you're not careful uh, with the chemical that mix together. Uh, with concrete and steel, you will create corrosion problem, and the structure might fail after a few years. Right? So today we're going to look at that particular cases where corrosion can happen in a reinforced steel in a concrete. <clears throat> so we have seen the animation. So again, where can you see the reinforced steel uh, in, con in, in in concrete? So you go to construction site, you will see. The, uh, the the steel and the concrete okay right <clears throat> um, why corrosion ha can happen one one of the reason is because the steel that you use in the uh, construction uh, site the steel that you use <clears throat> they are unprotected carbon steel type meaning you don't do special treatment right so when you learn about the uh, uh, material module previously, you learn about the, the the ion can change for alpha, beta to gamma, right? So if you do not do heat treatment, you do not do um, a normal protection or strengthen procedure, then uh, the element of corrosion can go into the can can go to the surface and uh, start with the corrosion process. Okay. All right. So this is the environment that. Uh, given the advantages to the corrosion, huh? because the steel itself, they are do not protected. Huh? They are not protected. There is no insulation layer uh, on the surface, right? Because if you <clears throat> if you have a special treatment on the steel, the steel price is going to go up, and uh, the price of your house will be uh, also go up also. So as a consumer, you you'll be uh, complaining about the cost, huh? So this is also the reason, huh? because of the raw material that you use in the construction. Yeah, so this one also same, like what I see just now. There is no coating on the surface and uh, there is no special treatment on the metal itself. Right? <clears throat> so when you do the construction, you have the iron bar. So so this, this is just a uh, cement, huh? <clears throat> just in case you never seen a uh, concrete or cement before. Huh? Okay, uh, okay. Then, yeah, you know that concrete you mix, how you make uh, concrete? You mix with cement, you mix with water, you mix with the powder, right? Uh, silicon powder, and some you add some additive <clears throat> to preserve. Uh, the property that you want. Okay, uh, don't be surprised. Your friend, uh, maybe some of your friends, you, they, they, they never see a concrete before. Uh, means uh, this kind of uh, liquefied uh, salt concrete before, right? So because of the the compositions of the concrete, you know that corrosion can happen when you have metal. When you have water, you have oxygen, you have hydrogen, and some environment, for example, acidic environment. Right? So 
when you have all these things together and put on the surface of the metal, then corrosion will start to happen, right? And the cement paste, they are porous in nature. What does it mean? Uh, when, when all these uh, cement paste, when they harden, uh, and you cut, uh, dissect them, you cut away and you put under microscope, actually they have a lot of hole between uh, their, their particles, right? So they are porous in nature. So um, what happened to this all little hole for the cement? Right, they were filled with <clears throat> alkaline solution because uh, you mix with uh, other chemical uh, component inside the powder. So when you mix, uh, so when it harden, all this small hole, this porous uh, hole or pores will fill with alkali solution. The pH value will be around uh, 12 to 13 or 12 to 14. Okay, so when you have this environment, then you are preparing for corrosion to happen. Okay, so these are the environment of the uh, reinforced steel. Okay, now when you answer question in test or final exam, um, you always uh, read the question. All right, read the question, and then you try to think what is the environment. Right, what is the environment of the situation? Environment means what is around the steel, what is around the aluminium, what is around the copper. Uh, the, the metals element or alloy, what is happening around them? Okay, then mix with the process that we have learned uh, in the previous section, right? All right, do they have the criteria to initiate the corrosion? corrosion? Uh, then you start with the equation, all right, the polarization, uh, the, the exchange of uh, positive negative charge, uh, then you can do the question. Huh? Okay, so we have this value. Uh, this is, uh, they have done the research, so there is a pH value around this one for reinforced steel, right, in concrete. So the value will be 12.6 until 13.8. Later, we will use this one uh, in the graph. So when you have all this uh, alkali value, so there must be a reason contribute to this uh, uh, pH. They come from NaOH, KOH, and CaOH2. Uh, huh? CaOH2. Okay. So all these are hydration. They are under hydration reaction inside the. Uh, cement huh? inside the cement when you mix water with the powder all these are the byproducts uh, inside the cement during the curing process right during the uh, when you let it uh, cool down when you let it uh, solidify uh, this is one of the products that you can find in the cement okay so just now uh, before we start into you before we come into this uh, reinforced steel in concrete I show you one video, right? I show you one video that uh, the researcher uh, pour in NaOH with the aluminium, right? Then you make, uh, then the, then we get the hydrogens, right? It, it capture the balloon with the, uh, the with the hydrogen, right? So, and then uh, the researcher mix uh, NaOH plus the aluminium, uh, then the chemical reaction happen. You, you collect the, uh, the hydrogen. So you have the uh, hydrogen product there. Okay, so later we'll look at how this uh, pH can contribute to corrosion. Eh? Uh, any questions so far? No, sir. Uh, no, sir. Good, eh? no, sir. All right. Um, okay. So, or if you if your product have this one, this one, this one, you will contribute to alkali. And previously, when we talk about alkali, if you go to extreme end, 
what will the, the, the pH will do to the corrosion? It will peel off the protective, right? Uh, if it's too alkaline, it will start to eat the uh, protective. But uh, from neutral towards the alkali, uh, sorry, towards the alkali, right? Towards the alkali, neutral towards the alkali uh, region. Uh, this this short region, it will give you protective. You form the oxide, you form the uh, oxide component, the hardened component that protect the surface. If you go too extreme, it will eat up the uh, oxide and then uh, it will trigger the cycle of corrosion again on the, on the new surface, right? Because the oxide run away already. So then it will, it will become a new, new site for the corrosion. So the corrosion will start to happen. So let's look at uh, some some value that we can refer to. Um, on the reinforced steel in, in, in concrete, after you, you let it cool down, after you mix everything, after you let it cool down, um, then initially they, there is a thin protective passive film on the surface. All right. And then the pH value, the pH value will be 0.52 uh, volt, right? It will be 0.52 volt on the reinforced steel uh, surface. And we are referring to ASTM uh, guideline. So this is one of the example of the P pH diagram for reinforced steel, right? So maybe on your site, you're not able to see clearly, but you, uh, if you download the tutorial uh, handouts in Teams, you're able to see this diagram clearly, right? So we're going to see what are the reason, re, uh, region uh, on this uh, pH diagram, okay? So if you're given a pH diagram with all the blank, uh, you don't have the box here, lah, but you have the pH, you have the PV, I give you the value of PV, I give you the, 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 the pH value. Are you able to identify where is the environment? Uh, where is the spot on the graph, right? Quite, quite easy, yeah? So you're given the diagram, it's like plotting X, Y graph. Huh? So you're given the X and Y value. In this case, you're given the pH value and the potential value. Then you identify where is it, huh? Okay. So all this you can you can see lah. So you can see the the region and all the reactions here. So um, this one I take it as a homework. You can read from the tutorial or later I will upload the PowerPoint slides. So you go and uh, look at it. Huh? But basically we are still using back the concept that we learned in previously. Okay, let's see uh, how reinforced steel uh, can generate voltage. Uh, let's just give you some visualization uh, video so that you have some idea what what is all this voltage. Because when you when we say about potential, it's very hard to imagine. Huh? Very hard to imagine. You only can see when you measure it uh, when you see with the instrument. There's a video. So this one uh, done by this university. All right, so they do a corros uh, corrosion experiment with the reinforced steel. So what they do is that they mount the reinforced steel here, and then they there's some solution here, and then later you see two wire, one connected to positive, one connected to negative. So there is a uh, there is some wire around the beaker here. There's some wire surrounding the beaker. Uh, then um, the, this steel, uh, reinforced steel, do not touch the outside steel. Huh? Then there is a solution between the steel and the, and the outside uh, 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 wire. So there are two wire, and there's no, again, corrosion, there's no external electricity supply. Huh? So just to re, uh, recap, huh? just to uh, remind you that corrosion do not need external, you do not 
supply external electricity, it itself will create if there is a, a corrosion site happen. Okay, let's see. Yeah? And then you'll see some value come up from this uh, uh, multimeter. So through the video, you can see that the voltage here can go up. And then after the peak, the value will go down. And then if you mix with other uh, chemical to recycle back, the, or we call it reverse reaction, the potential voltage is going to go up again. And then you will go down, the value will go down. And then you strengthen with uh, carbon dioxide. You see the value will shoot up. And then you drop again. Okay. So this is what happened in the uh, reinforced steel in concrete. Right? But this is a, a more simplified experiment setup that you in a control environment. Okay. So we back to the pH diagram that I show you just now. So again, uh, potential on the left, pH on the x-axis. So one of the keyword in reinforced steel in concrete is carbonation. Okay, carbonation. So this this word is uh, is a chemical chemistry word. Carbonation is something related to calcium hydroxide or either or other hydroxide okay other hydroxide in the cement paste okay so this cal calcium hydroxide he react with co2 okay co2 react with carbon uh, hydroxide or calcium hydroxide in this case so carbonation process happen. What does the chemical reaction? You need hydroxide, right? You, you need hydroxide, OH2, you need, ox, uh, you need uh, carbon dioxide, and then you balance the chemical reaction. Okay, you get CaCO3 plus water. Uh, again, you see water, 
corrosion, love water. So when you have water, then and then you have water, you have steel, then uh, corrosion happen. Okay. So another one is uh, a simply a schematic diagram of the reinforced steel. So what happened is that uh, let's say uh, this is a 2D. I show you the 3D just now. So you have the steel, you have cement. So what happened if corrosion start to happen? All right. So you know that this is carb uh, carbonation happen. Where is the site of carbonation? Is on the surface. Is the contact between cement and steel. Let's say this is your steel. So the surface of the contact surface of between cement and steel. Okay, carbonation happen. So when carbonation happen, pH drop. What mean by pH drop? It become acidic. What happen? What is the acidic environment can do to corrosion rate? It's going to increase the corrosion rate and corrosion will going to happen. All right. Okay. Then what happened to the front? The calcium hydroxide the pH will reduce around it. So after, after the, the reaction happened, uh, so on the surface, you know that it is very acidic. It become acidic, not, not very, uh, but it, be, it will go towards the acid uh, region. And then after the correction at the back, uh, at the back, then you will, uh, the, the, the pH will go very near to uh, uh, about eight. So ahead of the front, the pH remain uh, about 12, right? So um, for reinforced steel, your pH is alkali first, right? Then because of the carbonation, uh, the pH will reduce to uh, neutral. So it's a little bit uh, different from the previous uh, steel that we study. Previously, the for example, filiform, fili filiform, you get the acidic first, then it become alkali. But this one, the enforced uh, steel in concrete, uh, you start with the alkali, then uh, after the carbonation happen, you reduce to it. Okay, it's a little bit different from what we learned previously. Okay. Okay. Once this happen, then there are some product uh, form on the surface. Right after the, the chemical reaction on this side, something hard will chemical compound will form. So uh, the diagram on the far left there is is something that after of, of sometimes there are some products of uh, Ca CO3 for example. Uh, see in this example if uh, carbonation happen, so the products will form at the surface and it become bigger and bigger. And this one is very hard, uh, uh, very hard product. So when you have an external product forming and it's like pushing the surface uh, outside, so then there's a micro crack happen and micro crack can develop into a crack, micro crack. And you can see the, the piece break off. Okay. So this is how the crack happen in the reinforced uh, steel. So this is things lah. Okay. So if uh, test one asks you to explain what happened uh, to the corrosion uh, in the reinforced steel, all right. So you explain using diagram. All right. Using diagram, talk about carbonation, talk about pH, talk about how crack develop. Okay. It's like telling a story. Telling a story, and there will be mark for carbonation, chemical uh, chemical reaction, a uh, chemical this one, uh, there will be mark for this one. Um, there will be uh, marks for schematic uh, diagram like this. 
So you draw steel, you draw concrete, and then you explain what happened to the front, what happened to the back, what about the pH, and then uh, how the crack form. Okay, how the crack form. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So this one. Earlier we mentioned that there is a uh, flume on the surface. So when there is a corrosion, active corrosion happen, then this flume will, will peel off and there is a new site for the corrosion to take place. Right? So this is a statement for um, what happened to the passive flume just now on the surface. Huh? Okay, this is more on the solution. More on the solution. You know that for reinforced steel, initially you start with the alkali uh, pH on the contact area or inside the uh, on the uh, inside the cement. Your pH is near, near to alkali or al alkali uh, solution. And when the corrosion takes place, the pH drop near to uh, neutral. So how do we solve this problem? Is that we return the environment back to alkaline. Okay. So the solution for reinforced steel, we will use a procedure called re uh, realkalization. Right, realkalization means we, uh, re, we in, uh, we increase the pH level. Right, increase means you become up more alkali. Reduce means you become more acidic. Okay, you increase the pH, uh, of the environment. So the process or there's a technical word for increasing your pH is realkalization. And sometimes, sometimes uh, uh, for construction, uh, after for maintenance, building maintenance, what they do, they will apply a direct current. Again, uh, here the keyword is current. Uh. You know electric, electronic before, right? Electricity or electronics uh, module. There is a difference between current and potential. Uh. There's a difference between volt V and current I. Uh. So here we talk about I current, not voltage. Okay. So what they do to 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 strengthen the building structure, they will apply direct current. Means they will connect uh, steel, uh, connect uh, steel with the wire, and then with uh, some instrument, they will charge. Not charge. I cannot use the word charge. Charge. Charge means voltage already. Uh, they, they channel some current into the structure through the metals, right? You know cement, cement is not conductive, right? But the only element that conductive is, is the steel. So what they do, they, they, they input some current into the cement, uh, not cement steel structure, uh, steel. Huh? So the rest you can read from here. Um, this one is another one uh, solution to uh, to strengthen the reinforced steel uh, uh, to strength to prevent or to do maintenance uh, for the reinforced steel in concrete is that uh, one of the typical chemical compound is a sodium carbonate okay, sodium carbonate and it takes a few days uh, you will Take a few days. So sometimes when they do uh, building maintenance, sometimes they will seal the they will seal the whole site for a few days uh, because they they inject some of the chemical compound into the uh, building structure. Okay. Let's watch a video um, how they do evaluation on the reinforced uh, concrete. All right. So you see uh, there's a concrete behind here and later this uh, guy here, 
he will use some uh, potential emitter. He will use some a multimeter with a positive negative, and then uh, he will measure some value over here. Hi, I'm Stephen Garrett, an engineer in the Janey Technical Center. We're outside on this beautiful sunny day, a little windy, but otherwise pretty nice. I'm gonna show you three assessment methods we have for corrosion evaluation of reinforced concrete structures. The first method we're gonna demonstrate is half cell potential testing. Uh, in this method, we make a uh, electrical connection to our embedded reinforcing steel, and then using a voltmeter and a copper sulfate electrode, we'll take potential measurements across the surface of the reinforced concrete structure. The reference electrode is uh, copper sulfate, so there's a copper rod embedded in a copper sulfate solution, an aqueous solution. Uh, we typically take measurements uh, in a regular spacing across the structure, and then the changes in voltage that we measure is correlated to the corrosion activity of the embedded reinforced steel. Uh, we'll take these data and plot them in a contour plot, and that'll give us indications of hot spots of potential corrosion activity in areas where we might want to follow up with additional inspection or potentially repair. The second method we're going to discuss is surface resistivity testing. We have a handheld probe that induces a current in the concrete, an electrical current, and then across these inner electrodes, we measure the voltage change. That gives us a resistivity, which is proportional to the concrete's ability to conduct charge, thus promote corrosion reactions. So to do this test, we place the probe on the concrete surface, take a couple different readings at different orientations, and then record those measurements for later analysis. The third method we're gonna discuss is instantaneous corrosion rate measurements using the LPR probe, or the Linear Polarization Resistance Probe. Uh, this device uses a ring electrode and a half cell electrode to create an electrical circuit with our embedded reinforcing bar. The results of this test give us an indication on how fast the reinforcement might be corroding and when we might see damage in the reinforced concrete structure. Here's a great example of why these methods are very important for our work. This is a piece of concrete removed from a parking garage. Doesn't look like much from the underside, but on the inside, there's severe corrosion activity occurring. Without these methods, we would not have been able to identify the corrosion, and it would have led to damage, and potentially a threat to the users of the parking facility. Thanks for stopping by the j &E Technical Center. Okay, so through this video, you are introduced to a few instruments, and uh, there are some parameters that to monitor the corrosion uh, condition. So next class, I will give you some exercise to play with numbers and then uh, we try to solve. And for example, we try to solve for corrosion rate uh, uh, after a few years, right? What happened to the structure? We'll do that uh, next lecture, all right? So, uh, let me see. Do you guys need a uh, break? Uh, no need, Lasa. No need, yeah. Anyone need break? Anyone? No? Okay. If you need break, uh, let me know. Huh? Okay. Very good. So we continue with uh, kinetic principle. Um, the word itself, it will tell you something about how active the process it is, right? Kinetic means something is moving, some move, something inside uh, the system, something is changing, right? So we will be using thermodynamics principle to analyze the stability of the chemical compound or element. Okay. So basically you link corrosion process using uh, uh, chemical uh, analysis uh, that what you did in your uh, chemical class, you balance the um, the two side of the equation, right? Um, however, there is one uh, one special note here. If you use thermodynamics principle, um, you cannot use for corrosion rates. Huh? If the the, the your calculation involves thermodynamics, then 
uh, it will be not accurate for corrosion rates. Um, so let's start with uh, kinetic principle. So you know that when there's two metals uh, connect together, you will have uh, different charges, right? Different potential happen. Uh, so when you see voltage, voltage means a uh, different potential. There's a positive and negative charge, right? And normally when you have positive and negative charge, we call a cell, right? A cell. Okay. So when you have positive and negative, you know that you will have anode and cathode, right? You have anode and cathode. So we have two metals together. When uh, the, 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 the metals identify as anode, then it will corrode. Okay. Metals lower in what? Uh, when it's lower in the galvanic series, it will become anode and corrode. Another side, if the metal is higher in the galvanic series, okay, the galvanic series is there's a priority of uh, releasing charge, uh, releasing the electron, right? There's a rank there. So if you if you Google uh, or you go to uh, a material handbook, there's a reference behind all the all the textbook or handbook. There will be a Galvanic series of uh, material. So, right. So, if you have two metals that uh, one on the top, one on the below, then you'll get the highest um, reaction. If you put the first one mixed with the last one in the chart, then the reaction will be very reactive. Right. Something like that. So, uh, just to remember on the cell or electrochemical cell, when you have positive negative, uh, those uh, become anode you will corrode. Those, um, yeah, so it is what important. Uh, another one will, 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 will just contribute to the catholic uh, uh, reaction, right? So these, these are the processes. When you talk about cell, positive negative, so the anode will corrode and the catholic will support the reaction. This one, uh, next class, you'll see more in the calculation. Right? Okay, so in the list of material in this uh, governing series, I'll give you an example. If you mix, you put aluminium ion on one side, you mix with platinum or graphite, then um, then the, uh, the, the exchange of potential uh, will happen and corrosion will start to kick in, right? So, um, again, thermodynamics principle uh, do not support corrosion rates, but there is a way to estimate corrosion rates. We will be using a method called kinetic principle. Okay, kinetic principle. So what is uh, kinetic e at, uh, equilibrium? The word equilibrium itself, you know that when you see a force, forces in equilibrium means all the force inside the system equal zero. Uh, so kinetic at equilibrium means uh, once it's exchanged, uh, it will become stable, right? Like the video I show you just now, the reinforced uh, steel, you mix all the solution and then you see the voltage go up and then the voltage value will drop to a stable number. So when you get a stable number uh, of the voltage, it becomes uh, equivalent. Um, so all this you can read. Uh, only, um, okay, next lecture, when we talk about equation, um, one of the definition, you see I sub O means action current in our equation later on. Um, we will use, uh, our action current to define the rate of uh, corrosion. Okay. Or I will always related to oxidation. Okay. Um, well, something else lah, in the equation. You will see uh, 
when you do um, when you do kinetic principle, we we will take current or exchange current. We look at the in interface uh, property, for example, area that involved, and sometimes you can uh, you are given the penet penetration rate of the material, for example, before and after. So let's say you put this metal there before you put into the seawater, you measure, let's say the length is uh, 10 cm, let's say, uh, not, not length, uh, the diameter of the, the steel tube, let's say is uh, um, 3 m, uh, 3, let's say 3 cm, right? Um, 3 cm, you convert to mm, uh, 30 mm. So after a few years, uh, you, you take the steel back and you compare, you measure, maybe it becomes string to uh, 28 mm or maybe 25 mm. So then from this uh, penetration rate or corrosion rate, then you can reverse back to all the missing parameter in the equation. So this one we've seen before. For iron, we've seen this equation before. Iron can break into iron 2 plus and electron. So this, this reaction, we park them under anodic current. We label as I A. So if this process reverse back, right? So if you in the solution, all these uh, ion, ferrum two plus or iron two plus ion plus with the negative charge, it will form back become ion. When you reverse this process, it become catholic current. We label as IC. So again, when your element break into charges, it will create anolic current. When you combine charges, you get a products, you get a catholic current. Okay, so these are the two uh, concepts that you learned today that involve a uh, chemical uh, process that involve current. Uh. We now talk about current and not V. Uh. It's not a pot we are not talking about potential V anymore, but we talk about current now. Okay. okay. So to have an equilibrium stage or equilibrium condition, these two must be zero. So you know that in the corrosion process, this process will happen uh, uh, go and forth, means uh, it will, iron will become charges and charges can become back to uh, ferrum when they receive charges. So this anodic current and catholic current must be balanced. Okay, so this is a mathematics uh, equation that represents that this process is at equilibrium. Okay. So in conventional, this item, this anodic current, this one, Anodic current always positive. So conventionally, uh, before this before this equation, uh, you know that these two must be balanced. And conventionally, this one is positive. So this one must be negative to get balance, right? So IA equal to IC equal to IO. So this is the exchange current. <clears throat> this is exchange current. So <clears throat> if you want to find exchange current, you can look from the chart or table. Either you're using the anodic current and be careful when you use the 
cathodic current, remember there's a negative sign there. All right, sometime in the table, they give you cathodic current, the value is positive, but when you do in calculation, remember there's a negative sign for cathodic current. Okay, because in the equation later, when you solve, you will use exchange current rather than using this one. This one you can refer to a table, and this one is a you will see in a general equation that you use for uh, calculating the corrosion rate. Okay, so I think this one very straightforward. Um, two new things for uh, to uh, for this morning: anodic current, cathodic current. So um, today onwards, you should be able to visualize. Uh, should be able to visualize what happened when the question mentioned uh, uh, anodic current, or when the question mentioned cathodic current. What happened to the process? The arrow or direction of this is different. So don't mix between these two. Huh? Anodic is anodic, catholic is catholic. And the value that you will see in the calculation later on, uh, you'll be given a table. So the value that you see in the table, they all is uh, determined through experiment. Okay, the action current, you measure through instrument. Okay, so I pull this information one side. So just now, we cover anodic current, we cover catholic current, and we know that in equilibrium scenario, your exchange current equal to anodic current and negative catholic current. So there's one more uh, video <clears throat> so that you visualize, huh? you visualize <clears throat> what is the action current, how people measure action current. All right. um, I don't know about you, but one of my learning method is that I need to see things, how things happen. Right? Uh, when I study electro uh, electronics, uh, I need to go into lab and I need to touch the instrument and see numbers. Uh, so this is uh, one of the example you see uh, when you see it, I think you can memorize it. But when, once you see it, you can visualize what is all this current mean. Uh, let's watch this video. Hi, my name is Daniel Madamba and I'm an R&D engineer here at NDC and today we'll be talking about corrosion testing. So why are we concerned about corrosion? Uh, a lot of the parts that we manufacture here at NDC are made to be implanted within the body, and the body is not such a friendly environment for implants to reside in all the time. Uh, corrosion pits can occur, which can lead to a compromise in the structural integrity of the parts, especially for small devices. And corrosion pits can also lead to a release of harmful ions into the body, which can cause uh, allergic reactions and other harmful effects. So how can we be sure that our, the devices that we manufacture are safe to be implanted into the body? Um, one of the ways we can do that is through corrosion testing. Uh, we follow the uh, ASTM F2129 for the potentiodynamic polarization test. And the setup is shown here. We take our implants and we connect them to a potentiostat, which controls the voltage. And we immerse the part into this corrosion cell that's filled with phosphate buffered saline at 37 degrees C for physiological conditions. And the potentiostat will then increase the voltage gradually over time. And then one of two things will occur as a result of the increase in voltage. So the first thing that can happen is a pit can form on the part. And we know that a pit forms because you see this current spike here at the top. And that potential is what's known as the breakdown potential. So the higher the breakdown potential, the better your implant is at resisting corrosion. 
And once the breakdown potential has been reached, we reverse the scan until we reach a final potential. And that gives us an indication of the device's resistance to crevice corrosion. Um, so another thing that can occur is the voltage can increase until it reaches what's known as the oxygen evolution potential. And if it doesn't form any pits at that point, then you're pretty sure that the device is, has pretty good resistance to corrosion at that point. So another test that we perform with this setup is a galvanic corrosion test per ASTM F3044. And what that tells you is the part's resistance to galvanic corrosion, which, can, which is caused by uh, two dissimilar metals in, that are in contact with each other. For example, a nitinol stent that's in contact with a platinum iridium marker, for example. So that's just a quick breakdown of corrosion testing here at NDC. Okay, so the loss of uh, wire over there, and you see the graph. So this is how people measure conduct uh, experiment for corrosion testing. Okay, so this will be the, I think the third equation for today. So uh, we will look into application of this one uh, next lecture. So I equal to, uh, this is a current, uh, current density, means how packed is the, uh, how packed is the current. So you take the current divided by the surface area, you get current density. So the I here, what, what influence the I value here? Or yeah, what influence that the, the I over here? You know surface area, you know, very direct. Uh, you change this one, you, ch you change this one. If you have a fixed surface area, you change this one, you affect this one. So there are a few variables you can play around. So I'll give you all of this. So you have a different positive negative electrode. Uh, means if you mix with two different uh, metal, then it fall become uh, be below this uh, point electrode composition means you have a different galvanized uh, uh, potential. Then surface roughness, surface roughness will trigger how active is it, right? Uh, surface roughness. Um, and this one surface roughness is that the more rough the surface, the more surface area exposed to the process. Okay, the smoother or uh, the smoother the surface means less contact surface, All right? Uh, soluble species, yeah, this one is more on a chemical solution itself. So species inside the, the charges inside the solution. Uh, surface impurity, this one, uh, let's say you have a, uh, impurity means uh, you have, uh, you have an alien atom on the, on the surface. So this maybe this alien atom it will it will either energize the process or it will slow down the process. Okay. So these are the four main areas that control this equation. Right. So especially for density. Huh? Look at the electrode composition. So I'll give you one example of the table. So as you can see here from this table 1.1, the action current density with this IO here. And this one is in log, uh, log 10 value. Unit is area, uh, uh, not area, this one is ampere, right? Current is measured in ampere, right? Potential is in voltage, okay? Resistance is in ohm. So this one you need to call back your 
uh, Faraday law or your electronics uh, simple basic uh, principle. So uh, current is ampere over cm square. This one measure in cm square. So when you read table, you need to be careful on the unit given. All right. So I give you an example. For example, you have the ion that you're familiar with. If you mix with sulfate, iron sulfate, uh, electrode in the sulfate solution, the current density that you can measure is either is between minus 0.8 to minus 8.5. Okay, so means the density will be in the log, uh, in the log, log i uh, value. Uh, this one is in one molar. Again, recall what is one molar in uh, chemical classes. All these are in one molar. Uh, this one, a solution in one molar. Okay. This one, another table. Uh, this one is exchange current uh, for a redox reaction. At 25 degrees C, you see the system on the left hand side, electrode material, solution, and you can measure the current, the current density. Sorry, here is uh, density current. Okay, so it means you fix, um, let's say, I put uh, something that you're familiar um, Okay, tungsten. You put tungsten in this one, H2SO4. You can measure the density is this value. Okay. And you are inside the, from gold to tungsten, is under system H plus over H2 uh, in the system. So just now this table is under M2 plus over M. Um, or you can say M means, um, you can say M, M is an element, uh, 2 plus means a 2 positive charge. Uh, like that. Okay, so these are table that you can refer to. There are some value that you can refer to. This is another table, another example of table that you can refer to for current density. So this one is um, for hydrogen oxidation reaction at 25 degrees C for different metal. The, uh, the one that you're familiar is uh, this one, the Fe, Au, Mo, uh, the, fer uh, the ion is minus 6, log 10 minus 6, okay. log, log 10 minus 6, Ampere over cm square. Okay, so I take uh, you know that platinum, platinum, platinum. Oh, sorry, this one. Huh? For platinum, is ten negative two ampere over cm because you know that log ten minus two. All right, log 10 minus 2, you get 10 power negative 2, right? Uh, okay, because all these numbers are very small. So when you measure the current, you use log scale at the x-axis or y-axis in the experiment. All right, so this is how you convert the information. Huh? So I'll give you an example. If you look at hydrogen evolution uh, for table 1.3, table 1.3 is for hydrogen uh, evolution, uh, sorry, hydrogen revolution. Or another meaning for revolution means uh, oxidation reaction. Uh, you get ox hydrogen, uh, means you get hydrogen. So the value you re read from this table is 10 negative two. Don't straight away use negative two the value that you use in your calculation is 10 power negative 2 in 0 0.01 
ampere over cm squared. Okay, yeah? just be careful. Uh, this is also one of the careless mistakes in the uh, exam or test. Huh? If you panic, you will straight away use all this value. All this value is in log. So log 10 minus 2 is actually is 10 negative 2. Okay, mercury, PB, sorry, uh, HG, right? Mercury is negative 13. What does it mean? Log 10, negative 13, ampere over cm square. So log 10, negative 13, it means 10 power negative 13, ampere over cm square. Means this one have 0 0.120. 12.01. So it's more convenient to write in the log or exponential format. Okay. So up to this stage, ask yourself if you're given this table or the previous table, are you able to relate the value of, let's say, minus 5? What does it mean? All right. Okay, so don't straight away u minus 5, minus 7 in your calculation. It means 10 power something. Because the, the scale on this table is log 10 something. And there's some add-on information for your normal corrosion analysis. We assume 1 micro ampere you have to know what is micro, right? 0 .0, uh, 0 0.001. One micro ampere per cm square. It can do penetration rate of 1.2 cm per year. Okay, relate this statement. Okay, if the value inside this table is one micron ampere okay uh, just a just a quick question uh, just see whether you understand Ngan, are you there Ngan Chin Long, are you there uh, yes sir okay so if i take this this uh, value one micron ampere over cm square. What is the value that you expect if this value appeared in this row? What is the value that you can convert this one in all this number? What do you get? Minus something? Uh, minus three, is it? Minus three, correct. Anyone you don't know why the answer is minus three? If I put this one in this table? Anyone you don't understand? Any one of you, you are lost or you, you, you don't know. Because the question will give you this one. The question in the exam or test will give you this one. So you need to refer to the table. Or sometimes you need to expect or uh, estimate the element that appeared in the system. Any one of you, you don't understand why one micron ampere in this table is minus three uh yes sir. i don't understand sir okay we reverse back to these two examples huh? hydrogen uh no hydrogen platinum platinum on this table uh who 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 is responding just now uh me sir so Vindran, is it? So Vindran. Okay. So for platinum on this table, the value is minus two, right? Right. Correct. Right. Right. What mean by this number on this table? Log ten minus two, right? Okay. Your I is I O is this all this number. So log ten minus two, what does it mean? It means ten power negative two. Okay, okay, give you, okay, a, give you an, uh, you can link, right? Uh, now you can yeah. link, right? Uh, yeah. So, mercury, you get in this in this table, mercury, uh, HG, you, in this table is log 
10 minus 13. But when you communicate with the normal people, you write 10 power negative 13. So when the question gives you this one, one micro ampere, so micro, you know that it's 10 power negative 3. So 10 power negative 3, if you put back in this table, the value is, is uh, negative 3. Okay, by re reverse engineer the, these two information, then you'll get negative 3. Okay? Okay, All right. All right. So uh, a standard rule of thumb, if, uh, if you give you a scenario, uh, one microampere CM can do penetration rate of 1.2 CM per year. So you imagine uh, one year only lost one CM, one CM is very small, right? One, one year. So basically, if your value less than negative three uh, for civil application, uh, normally we would, we would just uh, treat as a safe environment, right? So here the, the statement say, uh, if the value fall below negative three, uh, then it is, uh, is it, it can consider uh, meaningless lah. Okay, consider meaningless. Okay, more than. But however, if you study on nano, um, nano material, nano scale material, for example, if you like the researcher in the video just now, that um, the researcher is doing something some about. Uh, bio devices, uh, for example, heart implant, you need to put platinum uh, devices into your body, or you, 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 you do a bone connector, right? accident, and then the, the bone break, you connect with steel. So the, the, the type of uh, the, the, the material that you put on your body uh, is important, uh, because this one is, one year is one cm. So if if your body, uh, if your application is in the mi mi uh, micro scale and below, then all this value becomes significant. Okay, so this is for, it depends on your op op operation. Uh. This statement is for, uh, for a general uh, big, big building structure uh, kind of uh, scenario. Then this statement apply. However, if you're designing some macro or nano scale devices, then this is this statement do not apply, huh? meaning all this value is important. For example, if you if you designing a microchip, uh, Intel microchip or graphic card huh? that are uh, involved with uh, nano scale uh, chip, then the corrosion reaction is important because a single snaps of the microchip leg or connection uh, at the hair hair thickness uh, dimension then this one apply yeah? because you know that uh, microprocessor one leg break uh, then connection there will be no input for that particular uh, microprocessor and when there's no signal then something go wrong uh, in the downstream process okay yeah? so we need to uh, don't don't hundred percent accept this statement huh? so you have to think uh, of the operation or application huh? so this is for the mega project something that very very big huh? that doesn't make any difference if you uh, have a corrosion rate or penetration rates of uh, 1 cm okay About uh, surface roughness, these are all the information that, um, just as an example. So uh, if you look at H plus over hydrogen system, um, what about the surface roughness deal with the value of um, current density? So if you compare the same material, but one is you uh, Platinize and one is a bright uh, platinum. The surface roughness between these two is different. If you 
put under microscope, you can see the difference between the platinum, right? Because of the process, right? One is bigger, one is uh, smaller. Okay, one is a 10 minus 2, 10 power ne negative 3. Right? So the process will be different, the electroplating process and uh, uh, a raw material or the, the surface condition will affect the density, current density value, right? So, yeah. Okay, so this one is just, this is area, area of uh, so current over area. So this one higher current, this one lower current. Soluble pieces, this is more on chemical, right? More on chemical. Surface impurity, this one is, uh, you have alanized uh, impurity that uh, maybe can affect the exchange of uh, electron and all this. Right. All this you can read from the slides. Um, graphical presentation uh, or what are the methods we collect data or how we present data in the uh, kinet uh, by using kinetic data? So we have three forms of uh, presentation. We have uh, events, polarization, and sometimes we mix the two together, it becomes mixed potential diagram. Okay, so we have three three instruments to help us to visualize the corrosion activity or kinetic uh, uh, activity, uh, events, polarization, or mix between the two. Okay. So if you if you want to mix the two, these are the information that you need. Lah. Okay. You need to have this one activation of over potential. This one is concentration. But this one is more on chemical terms that we will cover after this. Right? This is just a just an introduction about all the terms that we're going to look at later on. Okay? Over potential and concentration. What is important on this slide is that um, you you should know that they are, there are three graph that you can use to present your kinetic data. Even diagram, polarization, and mix. I'll show you some sample. Huh? So what mean by active control process? So you will see, this is sample. Huh? This is a sample of graph. Potential versus current. This is the log, log current. Huh? Log current in ampere. On the y-axis is voltage. So again, you are seeing two lines here. This one for 25 degrees C for ion. You see this graph. Huh? So each of the lines represents some processes. So for example, this, this line here represent the Fe become charges. This line here, it represents the reverse process. Okay, the anodic and catholic uh, process. Okay, this is just to show you uh, what, what can you expect when you talk about uh, potential versus log I graph. This is what you see. Because in the real case, all this line will, will not be like what you see now. It will be the, the pattern that you see on your uh, instrument reading, it might not show you this straight line, right? Maybe this one go lower, this one go higher, and so on. Okay. So you can see all this. Lah. Okay. And uh, when you talk about the kinetic data, there's one, uh, there's one word with link to this uh, potential versus current graph. And current is in log, eh? log i in ampere. The slope or the data on this graph we call 
TEFL. So you know the linear graph, y equal to mx plus c. If you have positive gradient, then we will, we will say we have a positive TEFL slope rather than we use positive gradient. So if you mention something about the slope of the line on this graph on potential versus log i, we use the wording positive TEFL, positive TEFL slope. And of course, this one is once you, once you know this one, then you know why this one is negative, huh? because the line go negative way. Huh? Y equal to m s plus t. Your uh, your m is negative. Your gradient is negative. Right. So what does it positive line slope link to? It link to anodic process. You did this one. Anodic. A uh, forum become charges. The negative one, the negative line, gradient, be linked to catholic process, right? We have covered these two, right, previously. Okay, so what does this line can be limited to? What can this anodic process can, can limit to? It can limit by the formation of protective film. So this one, when we study about the concrete uh, reinforced in concrete just now. So this one will apply if you are if you are studying about this graph, then if you have more protective film on the surface of the reinforced steel, then it will limit the slope of this one, right? This line will maybe go a bit flatter or it can be more, more slanted, uh, this line. So it can be limited by film or passivation. Okay, so this is a general like general view la, before we go into detail. Huh? So today we introduce you this graph, uh, P versus log I. Then there's a line there. And then what does this line represent? Okay, what happened to the, if you have protective film, okay, what will it affect? Which line that it will affect? Okay, so if you talk about protective film, you talk about passivation, you talk about this line. Okay, there's a line that represent anonic process, which is uh, your ion become charges. Okay, you will limit this one. Huh? You will limit the process of uh, this one, anodic process. Okay, and um, just now we mentioned about anodic and catholic, right? So this is the one that contribute to the corrosion. The, the element will corrode. This one, okay. Uh, this one, negative one. This one, it just it just provide the environment for for the process to happen, right? And then this are uh, other example, other example of graph that you might expect to see if you go into the field, uh, working field later on. So uh, when you read graph, you look at the environment. What is the temperature? What is the pH value? and you compare side by side. So this is a mixed potential uh, diagram. Again, the axis was the potential volt and ampere current. So straight line, like what you see just now. This is what you see just now. And you will see some same axis, same axis, but you have the mix. Uh, the word mix means you mix you overlap another map, another another result on the graph. You will see a curve happen. Okay, you will see a curve overlapping the graph just now. Okay, so these are the 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 general idea. What is the clean graph and a mixed potential? So this one is a normal one. You see only the two line. And if you're overlapping the data, you will see extra curve on the graph. Means you have a mixed potential diagram. Okay, and then one thing, uh, just now we mentioned about equilibrium, right? So on this graph, just now we mentioned when we find the uh, uh, exchange current just now, uh, your IC must equal to IA. Uh, equals uh, IC plus 
IC plus IA equals zero, right? So where is the point on this graph that reach equilibrium? Is this point when there's an intersect between your anodic and cathodic process? The intersection point is your equilibrium point. Okay, you exchange charge. You can find this point. Go down here. Go over there. You have two value on this in intersection point. You move down to get your current. Move to the left. You get your voltage uh, potential. Okay. So the intersection point on this graph will tell you the equilibrium happened. Okay. So these are the extract. Uh, how you extract data. How you read graph and how it make useful to you when you do uh, corrosion analysis later on. Okay. These are further example. Uh, this one is ion. Uh. This is ion. Try to see what is the changes if I change the material. Uh. This two is ion. I will flip to zinc. Uh. This is zinc. This is ion. Okay. This is zinc. Can you see the different? Uh, okay. Let's let's focus on this graph first. This is ion. This is zinc. Can you see the change of the line? Okay. And then what is the difference between this one and this one? This one is only the potential and current graph. This is a mix. Huh? When you have a mix, you have a curve of curve on the graph. All right. So just just to just to uh, show you what is the difference of graph that you might see. And we just explain what is the intersection point mean huh, just now. If you if you miss it, you need to rewind the video and listen. Huh? Okay. What is the meaning of this point? I just explained this now. If you miss it, rewind the video and listen it one more time. This is another one. Uh, okay, this two is the basic pH zero. At pH zero, what happened if I put the metal in the acidic solution? So again, you see the the line behavior is a bit different, right? You see the line, the line, yeah. Okay, if you put the slides together, you see this one. This is a zero pH zero, and you put in the acidic. Sorry, you put in the acidic. You see the line will will go up a little bit and go down a little bit on the two line there, okay? And you can see the equilibrium point also shifting, okay? The intersection point also shifting. Huh? Uh, let's do a little bit of study here. Just give you an example. So this one is metal, right? PS0, do you see the intersection point? Let's say this one, you move down, you'll get around, let's say, huh? around this is negative three negative four negative five so you get about negative four two or four about four two lah negative four two um, neg negative four lah, right let's say negative four okay negative four means 10 power uh, 10 power negative four huh? 10 power negative four current for Zero pH. Huh? Uh, Any one of you, you, you are not sure what I'm talking. Huh? You don't know what is uh, when I mentioned negative four. Negative negative four just now. The you your axis is log log ten and then ampere. Like what what your friend asked me just now. Okay, so this one you move down, you get a value here. So this one, let's say negative three means micro ampere. Microampere, right? Microampere. So this one you move down for pH zero. You move down, you get about negative four two something, huh? For two ampere. Let's say what happened to negative five. Your pH changed to acidic. Let's see what happened to your current. If you move down, it's about negative. Negative, okay, this is minus four, minus five, minus six is about negative 5.5, about there, okay? So it's about, yeah, okay, uh, 10 power negative five ampere, okay? 
something like that. This is how you how you read the graph, huh? or the late graph. Again, if you see curve, means it's a mix. You overlapping uh, data on the diagram. Uh, okay, this one I just put together the the case PS zero and five. Uh, this one is more easy to to see lah, just now. Okay, this one about negative four. This one is about negative five something. Okay. Okay. With this, we end our lecture today. Let me end the recording.